What's up, culture trekkers? <laughs> I love it when he tilts his head like that. Uh, we are on our way to Seattle. I got Finn in the car with me. You can see Zoe's nose right there. Uh, we are headed up to see Bree. If you don't know who she is, you haven't been watching my channel long enough. Go back and watch some of those videos about Utah, Southern Utah with dogs, um, some of those off the beaten path places in Utah, and etc. etc. So, We'll take you along the journey here and let you know all of the tips and tricks for how to do a road trip with dogs. Big old fridge there, Finn will move. Move your butt, dude. Big old fridge, microwave, couple drawers, desk area. Doggies not included. <laughs> Decent shower area. So they do have a breakfast here, um, and this hotel is really close to the airport. So it was the most affordable option just on a stopover on the way to Seattle. So. We are going to head out tomorrow morning after breakfast, of course. And um, that drive is about an eight hour drive from Boise to, Boise to Seattle. There are things that you can see and do here in Seattle with your dogs. Most of them involve outdoorsy stuff and parks, but um, maybe we'll touch on that on the way back if we have time. So we'll see how long I take to leave in Seattle because I'm a slow stada. Anyway, that's it for today. Good night. Little did I know the next morning would not be a great start. Good morning. Um, I went downstairs and got breakfast. I just kind of grabbed what I could and the staff was nice enough to just hold my dogs for me because Zoe likes to scratch the door to try to get out and then Finn would tear all the pillows apart. So yay. Um, yeah, just gonna eat breakfast here real quick and then head out on the road. Good morning. Good morning, baby. Need your tail wagon. Good morning, baby number two. Zoe. <gasps> That's a good girl. You like the camera now that we're on a trip, huh? <laughs> oh. <laughs> well. This isn't a fun day. Police are coming so I can file a report. I think I know who did it, even though they left without leaving a note. No note, no nothing. So we'll see how it goes. And I'm gonna come and snuggle my babies for a minute. This is the part of traveling solo that isn't glamorous. When hard things happen, the only person you have to rely on is yourself. And sometimes that can be a very lonely feeling. I waited for about two hours for the cops to show up. Finally called dispatch and just said, hey, are they gonna come so I can file this report? Well, Apparently their policy is that they don't come, they just do a phone call unless you request them, but they never said that to me. So I, I wanna say like, and be positive and say, oh, I'm just a little frustrated, but I'm beyond frustrated right now, especially since I could have been two hours closer to Seattle than I am right now. I don't know, it's just really disheartening, especially since the guy that had parked next to me, I had helped him with his coat that he had dropped, like he had gone inside, dropped his coat, I put it in the cab of his truck so that if he had anything important in there, nobody would just go rifling through his pockets. And then I saw him upstairs a couple doors down for me. He asked me how the TV worked. I helped him work out his TV. Went back downstairs to let the dogs out. He dropped his coat at the front desk again. And I mean, he was in 
his late 60s and 70s and his wife was with him and I just, I don't know, like when you help people out like that, you know, it just, it's really disheartening when they do something and there was nobody else parked next to me this morning and I just, anyway, it didn't make for starting out this trip very well, but gotta show the good bag and bad and ugly. With, or the good, wonderful, bad, and ugly, I guess I should say, and just roll with the punches, right? Anyway, we're on our way to Seattle. It's a little rainy again. Luckily, the rain did not come until we were already on the road, so that was, that was at least a positive thing, and um, hopefully this, the rest of this trip will be uneventful and accident free, knock on wood, and we'll see you guys in the next section. YouTube, especially in the travel sphere, can always show you the best things and the most adventurous things, but I think it's important to keep a balance because life isn't always perfect. But on this drive, I reminded myself, even though my car was damaged, at least the door still worked. At least me and my dogs were safe. At least my car was still running and we were going to make it there in a good amount of time still. So there's always something to be grateful for. and showers and laundry nice bathroom I've always found driving to be quite meditative and it forces you to be alone with your thoughts sure you could fill it with music and calling friends and family and audible books and but eventually you're still left alone with your thoughts and it's a great way to dive into those things that maybe you often ignore Out of sand. 
who made it all the way from Utah. heaven for Finn. <laughs> so he's like, I haven't done it. Having friends like Brie where they support you no matter where you're at in your life is what I truly cherish most. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all in the next one.